Hello guys, so welcome to today's show. My name is Jokes, and you're on JFL TV, the home of football. So if today not the first time we to see our program, for you to bring you the latest Arsenal news updates as they drop all over the world. So for now, we'll start with today's news updates. All right, so it's your world cut. Welcome as I can give your own analysis because I say I'm for the studio when they will analyze the match we Arsenal play against Brighton for the Amex Stadium. So you can talk to you, you don't see the Arsenal lineup with them play. Say at the end of the day, in feels say Zinchenko is a weakness in the Arsenal first 11. So that's what your workout is saying. And as Sports Kada actually put out those reports after waiting. Uh, Zinchenko talk. When you look at the headline, you will see and uh, uh, never really seems comfortable to work out highlights Arsenal star as weakness in Gunnar's lineup in win over Brighton. Now, who's he talking about? He's talking about Alexander Zinchenko. Now, Zinchenko offensively, he did very, very good because I they look at what things to work on the top. This is not be saying that, not be secrets. That's what I believe, say every Arsenal fan, they are aware. Which was why when you watch the pre-match analysis, what we we'll do yesterday, Baba Saturn made a mention of this. So why they no put Kivio ahead of this Zinchenko? Because we understand, say, if they give us lapses, ever since we know they will they get that defensive solidity, stability, and balance for the defense. If you say, oh, you want oh, no weaknesses. But when Zinchenko come back, if we check the match yesterday, there were some instances where Adingra face Zinchenko 1v1. He licking like a pot of soup, but you know, can't get in scoring boots very, very well. So we escape all those areas. Yes. So, like what Walcott is saying, Zinchek will not really did that for the match, but we just thank God say at the end of the day, we still win. I think at some point, and to me, not even coming to come cover for him. But you know, we feel blame at that because the way we be now, we know if they use Jacob Kivio every day, every day, every day. It is it no it's, it no make sense. So it's not no reason to be this sensible. So we must rotate. So it is either Zinchenko is playing, or maybe Kivio is playing, or Tomiyasu is playing. Now so it will be the season go end because even the Kivio, I mean, I'm not forgetting for international level, he played for Poland, he played 90 minutes, played a lot of games. So instead of actually needed rest. So the match will play against Bayern. Hopefully they will deploy. Keep your ahead of Zinchenko because if Zinchenko go play that match, all those Leroy Sane, all those Jamal Musiala, then kiss the command, then we do, they are looking like they are injured. If they play, ah, um, uh, you know, we did very, very easy for the player. So, all things been for now. So far, so good. When you look at the match we play yesterday against Brighton, Aston actually won 3 0. First goal penalty, Bukai Saka Bosnet, he scored that one. Then, away from that, uh, Kai Havertz also scored the Leandro Trossard from the assist from Kai Havertz called Lob the goalkeeper. So what that means is Kai Havertz in the last two games, about don't get like two assists and one goal. The guy is hot like fire. They play very, very well for Arsenal. I mean, they maintain the momentum. They continue because so many, many, many statistics they don't come out this season about Arsenal. So we are doing fantastically well. In fact, Kai Havertz will get a special mention because when you hear say as Kaiba have as they now, like ESPN even put out the statistics and say Arsenal have played a total of 11 Premier League games in 2024. They haven't lost a single match and spent any time uh, in these games trailing. You get so now you get I wasn't on yesterday before yesterday. I mentioned this and say when be the last time maybe say if you watch Arsenal game, your opponents on first or score. I ask that question for a reason because Mr. I don't feel remember. Now, ESPN is telling us in the last 11 games, no, we, like we never concede first. This year, 2024, we never play any match. We say, person first or score. We don't know how good. You see, the defense that you talk, say, the best defensive team in the league, we don't concede like 24 goals for this EPL, like this, like this. So, the people with they're responsible for this, all those government guidelines. In fact, not just the back four, I think it's a collective effort. So, if you praise anybody, you go praise the entire team. Because Saka said they track back. Martinelli, if he's playing, he tracks back. The Brazilians if he's playing, he tracks back. She like I have us want to talk about attack or defense. So he did there. He played fantastically well. So like some people, they enter my DM, they talk. This is a fine time to be an Arsenal fan. So we'll just see how 
things they unfold in our favor. All right, so away from that, so Craig Burley will be one of the pundits at ESPN. So instead of to say Kai Havertz is doing for us now what Chelsea hoped they were buying. You can see when uh, they buy Kai Havertz from the uh, Germany, so they're expecting we'll do the type of things we and when they do for Arsenal. So at the end of the day, they can't ask one question for ESPN. Since since Kai Havertz left Arsenal and left Chelsea, come Arsenal, come transform, can he perform like this? Is it safe to say Mikel Arteta has really developed him? Get Steve Nicole brought an alternate argument, say uh, Mikel Arteta actually bought Kai Havertz to play the number eight role. But as you know, work that experiment did not work. You can't play him as a striker. Say she at that one talk saying by Kai Havertz as a striker, but you don't need to be told that at that said is the one of the reasons they are bringing Kai Havertz is because of his high level versatility. And if you are talking about versatile players, he can play left back, he can play number eight, he can play attacking midfield, he can play top nine, he can play first nine, any one way he wants. So that's one self not part of the things we then see. We make them get them. We get. Even if Nico can extend the argument, because so if Kaihavas continues like this till the end of the season, so he asks that people won't buy another striker because they will look and say, why would you go and spend hundred million on the seamen or somebody else when we have Kaihavas? Omo, we did dead that argument. Okay, that one I just think Nico. I don't think Ateta is going to be thinking that one. Come end of the season, we know we need a, a striker. Even though Kaihavas is performing now, but we all know he's not the most prolific of strikers. You know, if you create 10 chances for a main score five, okay, so it's not that prolific, although they chip you in your own contribution. So let's just see what the future holds. Okay. I just have to say, most of all this ESPN bunch, you see, they follow, follow, uh, criticize Sky Harbors at the end of the day. Then not only testify, say the guy they play very, very well. And that is the reason why uh, Kai Harbors at the end of the match, whether they interview him, because they talk, say, uh, in they try to prove in haters wrong. In fact, talk sports. Can't do a story on that on the guy. Can just say Arsenal star Kai Havertz laughs at his haters after reaching personal milestone at Brighton. Now, what is the milestone? They say ever since this guy come for the EPL, his personal best for a season at eight goals. We don't score for Chelsea, but at Arsenal, he has amassed nine goal contributions. For that reason, this is his ever best season in the EPL. For that reason, I'm going to be very very grateful for Arteta who actually. Uh, stood by him, he gets gave him the chance to actually uh, do his best because many people you remember what thing happened when he first come as now how people they really caught in neck get but now he did very very grateful and he said I did very very happy because I know I'm one of the strong advocates. It was so many members of our community we are also strong advocates of Kai Havertz. At the end of the day, we have been vindicated. We have been justified for our immense unwavering support unconditional support of this player and that's what supposed to be that is why we are fans you want to be the castigate the player you offer him support because that is our own job description we are here to support the players all right so moving on for the post-match press conference with the interview uh roberto deserve so deserve himself come come and talk about the match so he was of the opinion that they played well until the second goal william concede Say they don't really shoot enough to score. And I don't know how many of you are aware, say, Arsenal and Brighton 12 games on beating run at the Amex Stadium. Because, like I said, after the match, I said, this ground where you see the Amex Stadium, it is a very, very difficult place to come and take three points. Brighton never lose here since August 2023. For you to know, say, you know they're very, very easy. The thing is, what will they do? This is with they go tough grounds on paper, go there. Scatter that ground, you get so that's something we don't really do this season, and I'm very very happy. Some will continue. Even said uh, the reserve become the talk another to say they miss a lot of players, like I told you, Carol Mitoma know this on the match, get many many players, but once they don't sell so many many players, they I don't focus in missing. Like you mentioned, like five, six, seven players with no day can't also there is no way you will play against. A team as good as Arsenal without all these type of players, even James Milner, no D, and you not say you want to beat Arsenal, it's you know, you know they're possible. I didn't grab trying, but even NC so almost that NC so that guy good gone, they get pace, but we still tame them. We get we tame them, let them say we not be our, like our younger brother. I guess so. Before we, are, we don't have on the, the shine, Manchester City said they go for this Amex Stadium. So I want to see 
how Man City won't be playing for this Amex you know, because Liverpool actually struggled against them at the Anfield. In the first half, I don't know, my this Brighton just lose guy. Liverpool just come back into the game. So Man City, when they go to the Amex Stadium, I will see how themselves will take perform. All right, so moving on, deserve to never stop again. Back on the next day, we knew before the game that Arsenal are the best team in the EPL. So there is no shame losing against a team like Arsenal. He said it. That there's no shame. Like when you lose against Arsenal, nobody bites yourself or they fight yourself. You don't say you are losing against the best team in the league on current form at the moment. So what's it? They're going to they ask him about the penalty, whether he get any objections. On the penalty, whether it was a penalty or not a penalty, why the talk say the penalty was very, very clear. Even though the bunch at uh, ESPN, they talk say the penalty is not a penalty after all. Uh, Tarek Lamptey is let touch the ball. But really, is that the argument? Is let touch the ball? Yes. So, you know, impede Gabriel Jesus from moving on to the right. Is that what? Oh, my, well, I was in some kind of bias uh, analysis. They deserve to say uh, no, that clear penalty, you no get any objection. Even Tali Clamps himself no object. The Brighton player has not really object. The VR looked at it and said, Carry go. Now, now confirm penalty. And some people don't say no penalty. Anyways, I'm waiting for um, Gallagher to actually come out and say whether it's a penalty or no penalty. Most of it is that we'll talk. All right, so moving on. So Ateta, they're going to ask him about Kai Havertz for the post match press conference. So he's going to talk say Havertz is having an incredible impact in the team. So the only thing when they ask, of Kai Havertz now is maintain this form, keep on this momentum, and all of us are very very happy. Say Kai Havertz not even collect yellow card for that match. So if for hamper and from the next match, so they just keep watching how things they unfold, they go. So I think we've played the uh, thirty-two matches already. Get so I don't think even if you get yellow card against us, I don't think it will affect us moving forward. I start to be corrected, but that's what. I don't think, but I know say now nah, the first 32 games so he collects 10 year look at they missed two matches. So we we'll just watch out since they unfold. We are very, very grateful and happy with Kai Havertz when just continue that momentum. Even Bukai and Sakasev is not left out. Sakasev, I don't know whether on a day I will say that Saka don't cross 30 goal contributions. Not really cross, don't reach 30 goal contributions. Now ESPN even come and let us know this fact gets. So Saka has got 17 goals and given 13 assists this season. And this is the first time with Saka they achieved something like this. So you know they did that easy. Yeah, so wish him all the best. Get main continue. And the next match against Bayern, I expect that to start uh, Bukayo Saka Martinelli because that match we need to go to them. I'm talking about that match. So Bayern Munich director gets that one second come and second they talk tough. You know, they're happy with what Bayern they do. That is Max Eberl. So this is a report from Goal.com. So the current person, Bayern director admits they have no hope against Arsenal as he tells Harry Kane and co and co-stars to be ashamed after surrendering two goal lead in loss to Heidenham. Now, yesterday, Bayern they, they will they lead this team 2-0. Before you know, bad, 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 bad. The team knocked them. 32 because they're very, very shameful. We make the director correct say, Oh, the way we be now, see, oh, if Arsenal catch them, see, they're not get hope for where Arsenal did because I read the entirety of the reports. That's the message with that director. Does say, If and you know what is be funny, this hiding helm, they be promotion team, it just come from Bundesliga 2 last season. So imagine them playing against a almighty Bayern with all their stars, Ari Kane, or Jamal Musella, or Thomas Mula, like. Everybody that you think is somebody who play for that buyer, then they get. Only say uh, Manuel Nua no play. Now Utrecht, now he play. And that one actually back at keeper because I see the rates, they give a 5.7, which means he did some errors because I don't really watch the match, but they did like they were disastrous in that display. Even Thomas Tuchel had no excuse for them because he don't really give excuses for this um, Bayern team a lot. And for what happens to Bayern, many, many Aston fans talk on side. Some enter my DM, some we talk, I'm openly say, oh no, if Aston catch this Bayern, they could make like a pot of soup, they could do this, they could do that. But mind you, they really judge football like that. Say Bayern lose against promotion team. Don't mean say if they meet us, it would be that easy. Remember, so we are not familiar with their game, they are also not familiar with our game. You know, they're the same league. So when we meet, it would be entirely different. That different thing we will see. Good. So that's what football be. So maybe they will look say that one don't give us bragging right now. Say although Oga Joker mentioned something, I think that was in the pre-match analysis when they talk say 
Bayern losing against Heidenham is going to make their morale to be low. And we said, since they win, they win, they go, our morale will be somehow high. And what will meet? Well, that one said, day. So, more just see, at the end of the day, I just hope we are all right. As that will take advantage of all this uh, lack of focus, or lack of camaraderie, where they affect Bayern by the time they come to the Emily Stadium. We knock them, blah, and black. A minimum of 2-0 is what I need. Then we take that one, go to the Allianz Arena and see how we will consolidate, lock up shop, the major thing that to qualify from the round of 16 to round of 8. And we see what happens between Man City and uh, Real Madrid. So let's just see how everything will unfold. Now, Paul Messon will be one of the legends at Arsenal. In second comments, I call it to say, it's Liverpool's title to lose. And Arsenal have good fixtures. When you check the Arsenal calendar, the Arsenal are still favourites, but on current standing, it is Liverpool's title to lose. Now, Liverpool, they play Manchester United today by 3.30 p.m. Yes, they will play today. Every Arsenal fan is going to be supporting Manchester United temporarily for them to help us do something to this Liverpool side. Either you beat them or you draw them. Shaq collect points. So this one I thought is Liverpool title to lose. I don't know that he himself don't see Liverpool calendar. Liverpool have a period where they will play four away games in a row and those four away games Craven Cottage did there against Fulham a uh, Mexi side derby uh, against the uh, Godison Park against Everton like you know they are easy they are playing against West Ham away all this after that they will come go prepare for the Europa League uh, Atalanta so all these games now potential games will collect points for their hands so you know they are as easy as people think we would they be with the fear say okay if we go to the Amex Stadium we might be uh, sensitive happen but they win convincing <laughs> Like, who would have expected to say that 3 0 will go play? We don't extend our goal difference. So, it is what it is. I think now the gap uh, match is about 11 goal difference, then uh, Liverpool maybe like 9 or 8 or thereabouts. So, now, so it just be. Now, moving on to so Danny Murphy. What come as I can they compare the likes of um, Odegaard and Beckham? David Beckham. So, if I compare them, but also Odegaard, say the guy they responsible for everything good. Will it happen for Arsenal? He sets the tone for everything good. Say that the same thing way Beckham they do for England side, where him that the Murphy also play for because he said play for England. So the guy they talk so many good things about our star midfielder. If you check the report, see that the Murphy compares Martin Odegaard to David Beckham after Arsenal beat Brighton. Odegaard, that guy, and he's very, very young. The guy that visionary, the guy that see her. Oh my, the guy they give me joy. Yes, they give me joy. I just they happy. For all this, she not defense, she not midfield, she not attack. Yeah, 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 we have the weakness. No wonder Rob Edwards talked that to say, I still have no weakness. You get, although I think I try to downplay that statement, but the statement is looking uh, to be true. Say, we don't really get weakness apart from what maybe work on they talk about as in Chenko. But when you look at things, I don't think we have anything to complain. Even the Sky Sports probably do a report on Gabriel Magales, the way the guy they celebrate block. As if saying a goal. So that shows you how much a clean sheet actually means to this Arsenal side. Because when you see that thing, I, I spoke about it in the full time analysis show. I said, look at the way Gabriel Magales and I don't even forget him with today. Whether it's not with Saliba, I've been with that. In with Rosa. But they celebrate this like, say, uh, say, person one wife shot in poor body. Thing, he tamo, you don't know, wonder about the pain or anything. Like he was so happy. If you read that Sky Sports report, you can't get ready to talk, say, the Arsenal bench, eh? The only thing they were saying in the dying minutes of the game is make sure we keep a clean sheet. Let's keep a clean sheet because clean sheet now is very, very important. In fact, in the post-match press conference, we're even asking Ateta, say, how come your defenders want to celebrate block? I say, they don't want to say stuff. And then I say, it shows the desire for the team not to concede. Like, they take joy in not conceding. Say, yes, you couldn't breach us, but we can breach you. So... Now, so it be, that's why we are the best team in the league. It's a defense. Defense wins you titles. Eh? Strikers win you games. Now, so it be, if you don't have a good defense, how do you want to win the title? Look at title winning teams of the old. Go and look at their defense. Look at the era of AC Milan. We have Japstam, Alexander Nesta, Maldi, Paulo Maldini, and Cafu. Plus, their goalkeeper Dida. Those people in that era. When you look at the attacking, you have Shemshoko, you have Zagi, you have Sidov and Co. But that that defense, the country of the defensive makes we have general gatus so there. So now so it be for us now look at Saliba, the Romogales, Ben White, Kivio, Zinchenko, then for the front to put the Declan Rice. How do you want to breach that side? How? Like, tell me. So I just say very, very happy and optimistic about this our fantastic team. In fact, 
it's a nice time to be an Arsenal fan. So moving forward to the biggest news of the day is the fact that Theo Walcott will be one of the football pundits. They come out and they say Zinchenko is the weakness in this Arsenal first 11 for the match we'll play against Brighton. I don't think anybody will argue about this. I think it's public knowledge. We all know this. And Sports K that put out a report about it when he talks, say Zinjaku never really saved comfortable when he was playing against Adingra with the four in front. But at the end of the day, at least we win. So, me as a fan, I know say yes, Zinjaku defensively is not that solid, but attacking wise, it helps very well. It helps us add more bodies in the middle of the pack because when you play against a Brighton side that knows how to keep the ball and crowd the midfield, you need extra body in that midfield, like an extra man. To help it tilt the advantage to your own side. So that's why the Jack was brought in. So at the end of the day, we are grateful to him because we can't play Kivio every day. We can't play uh, Tomiyasu every day. We need to rotate and rest players. So my dear Asa Lovers, I think it's a fine place for us to call the show and end. So it's like come your way in the evening to give you the evening news. So till then, thanks for tuning in. Happy Sunday, y'all, and I get my outside.